Okay. Okay. Good morning, Ms. Shail Dagur, and good morning, the participants who are watching this live session. Welcome to the captivating session on forensic insights and forensic science. In the realm of law and order, the field of forensic science stands as a gun of truth and justice. This session invites you to delve into the fascinating world of forensic science where science meets crime investigation. Forensic science, often referred to as the science of solving crimes, plays a pivotal role in both the apprehension of criminals and the exoneration of the innocent. It offers a meticulous and systematic approach to gathering, analyzing, and uh, interpreting physical evidence from crime, si crime scenes. This in uh, invaluable science has uh, revolutionized the way crimes are investigated, making it an uh, indispensable tool for modern law enforcement. Our session today is designed uh, to shed light on the fundamental aspects of forensic science, its various branches and the incredible techniques and technologies employed by forensic experts to uncover the truth behind criminal activities. We will explore the history and evolution of forensic science, uh, its role in uh, solving high prof uh, profile cases and its contribution to the criminal justice system. Before we start Ms. Uh, Shaili Tagu's session, I would like to give some short introduction about her. Ms. Shaili Tagur is a distinguished professional with a rich background in forensic science education and practical expertise. And uh, she earned her Master of Science in Forensic Science from Gujarat Forensic Science University in Gandhi Nagar, India in November 2020, following her Bachelor of Science in Forensic Science and Criminology from Bandelkhand University in Jansi, India in May 2018. Ms. Tavu's commitment to the field of forensic science is unmistakable as she currently holds the position of Assistant Professor at GFSU and NFSU, where she has been imparting knowledge on various forensic subjects since July 2023. Prior to this, she served as an assistant professor at Vivekananda Global University in Jaipur, Rajasthan from October 2021 to June 2023. At VGU, she uh, taught a diverse range of sub subjects, including forensic uh, ballistics, question document analysis, forensic medicine, and more to both undergraduate and postgraduate students. Her contributions extended beyond the classroom as she also took on additional roles such as laboratory in charge, club in charge, and NAC coordinator and a member of the internal quality assurance cell. At the end, I would like to introduce to the motto of Ms. Shaili Tagur, unwearing truth through science and justice. So I would like to hand over the session to Ms. Shaili Tagur and also thanks a lot for joining us today and over to you, ma'am. Uh, thank you so much, ma'am. I'm very glad to uh, presenting myself on this platform. So hi, everyone. Uh, as ma'am has already introduced about me. So currently, I'm working as an assistant professor at Department of Forensic Science in Padul University, Vadodara. So today, I am going to... Uh, focus a light on forensic insights, basically what forensic science is, what is the role of forensic science in this, you know, current era, what are the branches of the forensic science, why we need forensic science, what are the uh, scopes of forensic science in current scenario, and, uh, you know, to catch a perpetrator, how to evolve the forensic ideas, how to use forensic idea to catch a criminal and to investigate a crime scene. So today we'll discuss all this interesting point. 
and this is very important for us to you know aware regarding forensic science because this is the most important subject and many of the people in current scenario also in this modern era also many of the people do not aware about forensic science they do not know they don't know anything about forensic science right so it is very important to spread the awareness of forensic science to uh, spread the awareness of investigatory science right so such science is you know present in our current scenario to solve crime so these are the contents introduction important terminology related to forensic science then we'll discuss about the branches of forensic science then types of evidence scopes of forensic science etc so uh, coming to the main important point right what is forensic science so before going to the depth of the definition right whenever i teach my student also and whenever i ask them the question they used to give me the bookish definition of the forensic science yes and they used to give me the you know professional definition of forensic science but before going towards forensic science we need to understand what is the literary meaning of the forensic science what is the you know inner meaning of the forensic science why we need forensic science right so basically a forensic science according to me and uh, you know this is very important to inculcate the idea inside your mind that forensic science is a science of common sense which is not common to all right because because there is a difference between a forensic scientist and a layman people right we'll discuss it in the latter slide so first coming to this uh, you know main definition right as i told you that this is a science of common sense which is not common to all this is the most practical definition of forensic science right so it is very important to understand this definition so let's coming to this uh, you know definition of forensic science so basically the word forensic comes from the latin word okay so the forensic comes from the latin word known as forensis known as forensis which means public or which means the forum or which means the public discussion or which means the argumentative right so belonging to debate or discussion so basically the word forensic is a latin word which emerge from the word forensis which means your you know a platform where we are speaking for the innocent people we are where we are giving punishment to the criminal where we are discussing regarding the crime or where we are relating the crime with criminal and where we are saving the innocent so this is the definition of forensic science right this is the literary meaning the forensic science right so basically forensic science is a science in uh, by the help of basic science you know basic science you can say physics chemistry biology right so basically forensic science is the knowledge and application of the science for the purpose of court of law or for the purpose of criminal justice system so whenever right whenever we are using forensic science for the purpose of law now when we are talking about purpose of law what do you mean it means that we are you know we are solving case legal right when we are using science when we are using the application of science to solve a crime right so that is known as forensic science a forensic science has a you know used definition right so we need to understand each and every definition now the forensic science deals with your criminal justice system right so therefore this this is most important to understand that or you have to relate that first of all forensic science emerged from the latin word forensis which means public speaking so this is the definition in the ancient century right earlier our authors give definition that it is a latin word emerged from the latin word forensis which means a public platform now in this era we have modified the definition right and the definition is uh it is a 
application of the science, right? Which science? Basic science. This is the application of the basic science where we are using for the criminal justice system or which we are using for the criminal justice system, right? Or for the court of law, right? And as I told you, forensic science is also a science of common sense, which is not common to all. Now, when you merge all the three definition, you will get one gist about forensic science. Right. So we have to understood about what is forensic, right? What is the meaning of forensic? Before going towards the depth of the forensic, we need to understand what is forensic, what is the literary meaning of the forensic. When you understood the literary meaning of the forensic, when you understood the forensic, you will you know, gradually understand the role of forensic, the motives of forensic science. Okay, please change the slide. Now, these are the important terms related to forensic science, right? So, when we are talking about crime scene, right? So, see, as I discuss about forensic science, I hope uh, this each students are listening to me. Uh, the definition is clear to all. And I want you to make the session more interact interactive, right? If you feel you can, uh, you know, uh, raise your hand and ask me question in between. Okay, ma'am, please allow student to ask question in between, okay? Yes, ma'am, uh, but not now here. Okay, uh, if they want to ask, they can ask, ma'am. Yeah, ma'am, I, I will ask last uh, in, at the end of the session. Okay, ma'am, no problem. Yeah, okay. okay. So... Oh, uh, okay. So these are the terms related to forensic science. So as we have discussed already about forensic science, now coming towards the terms related to forensic science. So one is your crime scene, right? So when we are talking about forensic science, means we are talking about solving crime, right? Now, there are few elements. When you are talking about solving crime, you are talking about linking the crime with criminal with crime scene. So you are linking three elements together, crime scene, criminal, and crime, right? So when we are talking about crime scene, so before understanding crime scene, I hope everyone heard about crime. So crime is anything which violates the law of our society. Right? That is known as crime. Crime is of many types, like your blue collar crime, like your white collar crime. When we are talking about the blue collar crime, so the heinous crime committed by lower grade people is known as blue collar crime. Right? And when we are talking about white collar crime, so a crime which is committed by a higher class people, like your lawyer, doctors, engineers, judges, right? Even the experts. So these type of crime is known as white collar crime, right? So when we are talking about crime scene, we understood about crime, right? Now coming towards crime scene. So crime scene is a place where the crime has been committed, right? A place where the crime has been committed is known as crime scene. It is also known as scene of occurrence where the event has been takes, take place, right? So this is your crime scene or the scene of occurrence. Now crime scene, you can divide it into three category. One is your outdoor crime scene. Another is your indoor and third one is your convenience crime scene, right? So when we are talking about these crime scene, so first of all, you need to understand about outdoor crime scene. So outdoor crime scene is a crime scene the crime which takes place in an open area, right? So the area must be open like your playground, right? Like your, your uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, back, uh, backyard of your house, on the terrace. So these are the open crime scenes. So these crime scene is known as your outdoor crime scene, right? And when we will discuss about the law, there is a law of progressive change. There I will discuss about the outdoor 
you know crime scene in detail okay so for now you need to understand what is outdoor crime scene so outdoor crime scene a crime which is committed in the open area like the playground right now the second one is indoor crime scene the crime which is committed in an enclosed area that is known as your indoor crime scene right like inside the room inside the office inside the house right inside a any enclosed area right that is known as your indoor crime scene now when we are talking about uh, you know convenience crime scene so the crime which is occurred in a in a moving vehicle or in a vehicle is known as convenience crime scene many of time you have heard about decoity in the train right so that is the example of convenience crime scene now we have understand lot of terms related to forensic first one is forensic itself second one is your crime scene third one is your crime right now we'll discuss about evidence now uh when you wants to link the three evidence like crime criminal and crime scene for that you need evidence obviously because court understand only evidence court accept the evidence only right court will not accept your know, eye witness or any oral witness only court always demand for the uh, uh, you know evidence right a report of the evidence right so that is known as evidence evidence is anything which you know which is in the form of scientific data right and which is used for the application of criminal justice system or which is used for the criminal proceeding that is known as your evidence any proof or any scientific data which is used for the criminal proceeding is known as your evidence okay so coming to the word testimony okay so testimony is basically this is the word uh, testimony means uh, related to evidence itself but when a formal statement is given that is something true right so when the statement is given in the court right so that is known as your testimony right now there is one another related term that is your witness so when a person when a person see something happen and then tell about that particular event in a court or to a police so that is a witness you have many of time you have heard in the crime series also who is the witness so witness is any person who who sees something happen and who can tell other people also about it later so that is known as your witness right so see evidence again when we are talking about evidence so uh, i have missed one part in the evidence sorry for that so evidence is of again three types right one is your oral evidence second one is your hearsay third one is your scientific evidence so when we are talking about the scientific evidence right so it means that uh whatever uh, evidence we are getting right and we used to collect that evidence and when we collect that evidence we used to uh, pro, uh you know we used to collect the evidence preserve the evidence and then we used to examine that evidence and we used to generate the report of the evidence so that is known as your scientific evidence right then when we are talking about the oral evidence right so oral evidence means the person who has seen or who know about the case and when he is giving oral testimony in the court of law that is known as your oral evidence right then when we are talking about your hearsay evidence or hearsay witness means hearsay means if you have heard something about the event you didn't saw the event just you have heard from the next people right and you are producing your thought in the court of law or to the police so that is known as hearsay evidence okay now evidence these are the types of evidence now evidence is classified into two category right so that i will discuss later okay ma'am please change the slide 
Okay, so we have understood a lot of definition or a lot of term, terms related to forensic science. Now, this is investigation, right? So investigation is the official examination of the facts, right, about a situation. We have seen in many of the, you know, web series or CID, right? What uh, Daya, Saluke, what they used to do? They used to investigate, right? They used to investigate the fact, the situation, right? They used to, or the police used to investigate the fact or situation. So that is known as your investigation investigation right now when we are talking about the criminal investigation right so criminal investigation is an applied science that involves the study of facts which are used to inform the criminal trial so before a criminal proceeding we used to conduct a investigation to find out all the truth and evidence regarding the crime right so that is known as your criminal trial now what is inquiry so inquiry is the act of asking for the information. You have seen many times the police came to the house or come to the house for the inquiry, right? So in the many, uh, you know, web series you have seen the police come for inquiry. So inquiry means act of asking something, right? Ki whether it happened or not, whether you were present or not, what you have seen, what was the situation, what was the circumstance. So this is known as your inquiry. Now coming to FIR, that is your first information report. This is a written form of document, which is documented by only the police officers or police when they receive the information about the commission of the cognizable offense, right? Or the offense. So whenever a you know, a citizen uh, go to the police station, right? And explain him the scenario regarding the crime. The police used to note all the information and file an FIR, file a FIR, sorry. Yes, so this is uh, your FIR, which is always documented by police people, right? Okay, so what is cognizable offense? So cognizable offense are the, you know, offense, for which the police can make arrest without a warrant, like, right? Like in a heinous crime, like your rape, murder, yeah. So in these type of crime, police need not to wait for the warrant, arrest warrant, and the police officer can make arrest without a warrant or prior court order, right? Directly go to the culprit's uh, place and can arrest culprit, right? Now coming to non-cognizable offense. So when we are talking about non-cognizable offense, that means the offense in which police cannot arrest a person without warrant, right? So for that, with, uh, the police need to get the permission of the court or need to get the warrant to arrest an individual. Suppose, uh, I hope everyone has seen, uh, you know, a scam 1992, right? So in that scam, when Harshal Mehta, you know, uh, got you know arrested by the police that time the police need to get the warrant before arresting him because in these type of cases or in those cases the police need a proper document or permission to arrest a particular uh, person for that scenario okay ma'am please change the slide now we have understood forensic science. We have understood all the terms related to forensic science. Now, after this webinar, if anyone is interested in forensic science, and if you go through the books or Googles or any informative platform, right? So uh, you will face this terminology, of course. So that time you will understood everything very easily, right? Because we have already discussed about the related terms uh, with forensic science, right? So now, before going in the more depth of forensic science, we need to understand the laws of forensic science, right? So there are seven principles you can say, or you can say seven laws of forensic science, right? So when we are talking about the laws of forensic science, the first law is law of individuality. Second law is law of progressive change. Third law is law of comparison. Fourth law is law of analysis. Fifth law is law of exchange. Sixth is law of probability followed by law of circumstantial fact. 
Okay, ma'am, please change the slide. So when we are talking about the law of individuality, so what do you mean by the term individuality or individual? So it means individual, the word individual means, you know, unique or uniqueness. So when we are talking about law of individuality, so according to this law, uh, this law says that each and every object in this world is different from each other or unique from each other, right? So every object, whether natural or man-made, right? Or natural or artificial, each and everything in this entire world is unique. So suppose the most important and foremost example of this law of individuality is your fingerprint. Now the student who are listening me, just we can do, you know, a hands-on practical right now only, just look at your fingerprint closely, right? Uh, if you are having, you know, a magnifying glass with you, you can see very clearly, right? So you can see that our fingerprint even is different from each other. The finger, the fingers having fingerprint in the same hand is different, right? Suppose we are talking about your right hand. So two fingers of your right hand having different fingerprint. Right. So, so, so this is the, you know, um, you can say the specification or you can say the speciality or you can say the perfectness of the law of individuality. And this law is obviously applicable in our forensic science. Right. Or you can say that uh, even the twins, twins baby. Right. So di if, if we are talking about dizygotic uh, di twins and monozygotic twins, even those twins do not having the same fingerprint, right? So this is the fact about law of individuality. Then suppose if you are having two 500 nodes, if anyone of the uh, if anyone having two 500 nodes just take at that node and compare you will see the difference between that you will see the individual features on that right so whether the things are natural means made by the nature or provided our uh, provided by our nature or whether it is artificial, like our notes, like our, uh, suppose, two computer of same company, like I'm talking about LG company monitor, right? So two LG company monitor of the same price, same size, same feature, but still there must be individuality in the particular system, right? I am not talking about individuality or in their programming, but I'm talking about individuality in the peripheral region or in some other part, but the individuality must lie, right? So this is known as the law of individuality. According to the law of individuality, everything is unique in this entire world, right? Okay, so when, suppose, uh, uh, if you, Take the two strands of your hairs, two hairs, right? So you can see under the microscope the difference between the two hair or the individual features of the two hair, right? So this is known as your law of individuality, right? Now, the principle considered as most basic elementary unit of forensic science. So whenever you will go for the investigation, right, and you got a gun on the scene of crime, suppose, right? And uh, suppose you got AK-47, right? And there are two bullets present nearby, right? Within uh, 500 meters. So you can feel or you can see the difference between the two bullets which are hurled from the same firearm, right? So this is the beauty of law of individuality. Ma'am, please change the slide. Now, coming to law of progressive change, right? So when we are coming to law of progressive change, so everyone knows that with the passage of time, right? Everything get changed, nothing remain constant. Even we, we, we also changes with the passage of time when we are at uh, one, one year old or when we are of 
four years old. So gradually there must be a changes in our body, in our morphological structure, in our entire gesture, posture, everything. So nothing remains constant in this world. Everything is transition, right? Everything is transition. Everything get changes with the passage of time right? Even the time itself not remain the same, right? So this is the law of progressive change. So I call, um, uh, coming to the depth of this law, so progressive means increasing change. So progressive change means when we are talking about the law of progressive change, it actually means that we are talking about nothing remain permanent in this world, everything get changes. Now, how this law applicable to the forensic science? So as I told you, we'll discuss about the outdoor crime scene in the latter slide, right? So I'm just giving you one scenario and I'm explaining you that scenario, right? So suppose there is a open or outdoor crime scene. There is an outdoor crime scene, right? So on the day one of that crime scene, the evidence are quite perfect. But according to, you know, increasing day, on the day three, day five, day six, the evidence start losing its integrity. Why? Because nothing is permanent in this world. And on the scene of crime or on the outer crime scene, the evidences are exposed to the external environment and the external environment is acting on the evidences, right? And whenever the external environment like air, temperature, rain act on the evidences, it's obviously destroy the integrity of the evidences, right? So this is the law of progressive change. The, so it is very important to, you know, whenever the police get call uh, regarding any crime, it is the foremost duty of the police uh, with, uh, you know, mobile unit, police must reach to the scene of occurrence so that they, can, they collect the proper evidence from the scene of crime, right? And there must be a less contamination because according to law of progressive change, as I explained you, nothing is permanent, right? So whenever the evidence are exposed with the environment, right? So there is the chance of high contamination in the evidence, right? So this is the fact about law of progressive change. Next slide, ma'am. Now, Locard's principle. Now, Locard's is known as the father of forensic science, right? Edmund Locard. This is principle number three. So, Edmund Locard, known as the father of forensic science. Okay. So, what he said that he gave the principle of exchange, or you can say the law of exchange. So, according to the Edmund Locard, whenever the two entity comes in contact with each other, right? There must be exchange of something between two, right? Suppose whenever there is a person A and the, there is a person B, right? So two person are friend and two person used to visit each other's house. So whenever the person A go to person, person B's house, so that person A will take something, with him and leave that trace in the person B's house and vice versa will happen. Again, I'm giving you example. Suppose there is a, there is a, a crime scene, right? There is a crime scene. So when the criminal leave the crime scene after committing crime, the criminal always takes something from the crime scene, right? And also leave the trace evidence on the scene of crime. Right. So example, you have seen many times what you have seen. You have seen many times, like suppose in a room, there is a rape. Suppose in a hotel, you got the news regarding the rape. Rape, right? So uh, uh, in the room, uh, suppose you, uh, you know, you have seen a rape case, right? So the rapist must, uh, you know, leave the trace evidence in that room, right? So 
So the most important thing to understand in this, Lokat says there must be the exchange of two entities whenever the crime uh, criminal comes to the crime scene or vice versa, right? So he must leave the trace at that scene, right? So uh, example, it is very important when you are having the crime scene, so it is very important to barricade the entire scene. Why? Because to prohibit the entry and exit of the personnel, because there must be a change in the entities, right? So to, you know, avoid uh, contamination, we need to barricade the crime scene, right? Whenever I'll get the next chance, that time I will uh, discuss about the crime scene management. So there I will explain you what is the mission of the crime scene, how to protect the crime scene. So basically, all in all, the Locard's principle says there is the exchange of something between two entities. Suppose you are touching your laptop. So you are leaving your sweat on the top of laptop and you are collecting dust from that laptop on your hand. So this is the law of exchange. Please change, ma'am. Right. So this is the example we have already discussed. And these leads in investigation. So if you keep all these principles in your mind while investigation, it will definitely aid you. Please change. Now, principle of comparison. Right. So forensic says that likes to be compared only, right? In forensic, we say that only likes can be compared. So for example, if you get the bullet of AK-47, you must compare the bullet of AK-47 with AK-47 only, not with AK-74 or not with 0.303. Are you getting me? So this is your principle of comparison says only likes can be compared, right? So human hair can compare with human hair only, not with other species here, right? So this is your uh, principle of comparison and very important comparison and very important principle given by the forensic science. Change, please. Okay, principle of analysis. Now coming to the principle of analysis, which plays a you know very significant role in our forensic science. So basically, this principle states that the quality of analysis would be better by collection of a correct sample and correct preservation, right? In a prescribed manner. And suppose you yeah, you know, you are at the scene of occurrence, outdoor scene of occurrence, right? So there, when you are collecting the forensic evidence, no, you need to add preservative if the preservatives are required, right? So according to the nature of evidence, we add preservative to that evidence if the uh, evidence required preservative, right? Suppose example, you got, uh, you know, a cloth full of blood, right? And the cloth is wet, right? So what do you do? Did you directly pack the cloth and send it to the laboratory? No, we must dry it to avoid the microbial growth of the... Yeah, hello? Okay, so we must, uh, uh, you know, dry the cloth in a shade to avoid the microbial growth. Right. So this is your important thing we need to follow before the collection and preservation of the evidence. Right. So this is what principle of analysis says. It says that, you know, uh, it is very important to maintain the integrity of the evidence. And how you maintain the integrity of the evidence? By the proper collection and by proper preservation technique, right? So what do you mean by proper collection? You need to, suppose uh, you got bullet, right? So it is very important to collect that bullet with rubber-based foreshape. You cannot use bare foreshape on that bullet. Why? Because it might might make the dent mark on the bullet and which will destroy the evidence, right? So therefore, we need to collect very precisely. We need to preserve the evidence very precisely. We need to use the preservative very precisely, right? To avoid the contamination or the tampering or destruction of the evidence, right? So it is very important to maintain the uh, you know, integrity of the evidence, 
right so this is the important thing about the principle of analysis change please ma'am okay this is the sixth law right law of probability when we are talking about law of probability see there is one truth about forensic science the forensic is based upon the uh, you know heat and trial method right so law of probability says all identification made consciously or unconsciously on the basis of probability right so suppose the perpetrator blood group is a perpetrator means the you know accused person or the criminal okay so the perpetrator blood group is a so it might possible no the person presenting around uh, the person who is present around having the same blood group right so this is your law of probability right suppose a woman with a tattoo right tattoo uh, on the right hand and injury mark on the head right this is the feature or this is the you know information the police having right so suppose this woman is found lost right and simultaneously the police got one uh, you know one dead body or one corpse of that missing woman right so there is a high pro a probability or possibility or chance that the dead body is of the missing woman right because the missing woman having the uh, sorry the dead women having the same features right so the probability that the dead women is of another woman will be one in one million okay so law of probability is basically in simple word if you want to you know understand it means the things which may or may not be happen okay so this is your law of probability ma'am please change now coming to law of circumstantial fact right so when we are talking about law of circumstantial fact it means that a person can lie but a evidence cannot right a fact cannot be wrong but a man can right right a fact cannot lie but a man can do right so we cannot trust an individual but we can trust a dead body because a dead body shout and a dead body always tells you the truth but a live person uh, you know it's very difficult uh, to get you know truth from the live person right so a dead body always emphasize on truth right or always emphasize on the fact but a live person may not right so this is your law of circumstantial fact ma'am please change acha what do forensic scientists to do okay fine so we have understood the forensic science we have understood the terms related to forensic science we have understood the principle of forensic science now what forensic scientists to do right so what is the role of the forensic scientist so a forensic scientist is a first scientist and with the help of the scientific application and knowledge right they used to use that application for the purpose of law right so example for example um, let's talk about some uh, you know some case like rape case right so there is a rape case and there is a only evidence uh, like your semen right so the expert or the scientist will collect that semen and preserve it and then send it to the laboratory and after that while examination they used to find all the detail from that semen only the blood group of that person right then the antigen present in that right then your dna from that semen right so the forensic scientist used to investigate and used to collect all the truth from a trace evidence or a particular evidence right please change okay so these are all the role of the expert so first is your evidence examination as i told you right in bhabri devi case also the forensic plays a vital role in shina bora murder case also forensic plays a vital role 
right? In Shushant Singh murder case also, then your Arushi Talwar murder case also, then your Burari Hatya Kand also. So these all are the case which are based up on your forensic. And I hope many of you watching forensic movie and forensic series, right? So many of you know about evidence examination. Suppose if, uh, you know, expert found a blood pool of blood or blood pool on the scene of occurrence, what, the, what is the role of that expert? First of all, you have to control your emotion. Then you have to take that evidence now this is very important to understand how to collect how to preserve so according to the nature and presence of evidence we need to go with the collection and the preservation of the evidence right so first we collect that blood and with that blood we'll go for the further examination blood grouping antigen test right species identification then your dna Right. So these are the evidence examination. And this is the foremost role of the forensic expert. Then you are with that examination, they used to make the report. Right. And from and that report plays a significant and crucial role in the court of law to save innocent and punish the criminal or perpetrator. Ma'am, please change the slide. The coordination means. This is the foremost and important role of the forensic expert to make a cordial relationship with the police professional also because the police do not know a single thing about forensic science. They do not know how to collect evidence and they review the evidence, right? So they are having just the basic and common idea and with the help of that, they used to explore the scene of occurrence, but that is wrong. And that's why Amit Shah has announced that there must be the recruitment of two pro forensic professional in every police station. And this is mandatory to, uh, this is mandatory for all the states present in India, right? So it is already adopted by Delhi police, Punjab police, your Karnataka police, right? So every police station is adapting and recruiting the forensic professional in the police station, right, for the help. One is junior scientific officer, second one is senior scientific officer, right. So this is important to maintain the cordial relation and coordination between forensic expert and your uh, police officers. Now the third, last one is mentoring. So when we are talking about the mentoring, so those students who are pursuing forensic science in BSc and MSc, they used to go for the uh, you know, uh, internship. So the forensic personnel used to mentor them or used to guide them. Yes. And, and the most important is the forensic people also guide IPS officers or police officer or the required personnel who wants to gain knowledge regarding the forensic science for the purpose of the law only. Okay. So this is the duty of the forensic experts. Change the slide. Please change the slide, ma'am. Okay, so what investigator do? So uh, the forensic expert are the investigators. So first they collect, second they preserve, and third they analyze, as we have already discussed. Please change. So these are the service provided by the forensic scientist. So the forensic scientist used to provide two kinds of service. And yes, I need to tell everyone one thing. The forensic field is entirely different from your Dr. Shaluke's life or the, entirely different from the CID. Yes, because CID is a fiction, right? But in real life, it is entirely different. So these are the service provided by the forensic expert. One is your desk job and other one is your, uh, you know, field job. So basically, when we are talking about the field job, the forensic people, those who used to assist the crime scene, those are known as your uh, field workers. And the expert who used to assist in the laboratory are as your desk job, right? So basically, on the scene of crime, they used to recognize and discover the evidence, they collect the evidence, they pack the evidence, and they transport the evidence, right? And in laboratory, whenever the transportation of evidence takes place, that means ultimately the evidence will reach to the laboratory, right? When the evidence reach to the laboratory, so what happened? What happened? Then the forensic expert will 
open the case and start examination of the exhibits right so this is the job or service provided by the forensic expert next please now these are the types of or classification of forensic evidence as i told you in the next or later slide i will discuss so forensic evidence is divided into two one is your physical evidence other another one is your digital evidence now whenever we are talking about physical evidence physical evidence means the evidence which are present physically on the scene of occurrence right suppose a dead body a computer a laptop a syringe a medicine whatever is present on the scene of occurrence is known as your physical evidence but when we are talking about digital evidence that means the data present in the computer or digital device is known as digital evidence many of the people used to make blender that uh, you know evidence is physical evidence chemical evidence biological evidence but no these are not the evidence these all are the kind biological evidence chemical evidence right miscellaneous evidence all are the examples of physical evidence only evidence is classify only into two category one is your physical evidence another is your digital evidence when we are talking about physical evidence it means it present physically on the crime scene when we are talking about digital evidence it means it is present in the digital dev device in the form of data these are the classification of forensic evidence ma'am please change okay so coming to the branches of forensic science right so branches of forensic science there are approximately 17 branches but but now what a, a new branches are adding in the forensic science but here we will discuss a few branches first one is your uh, ma'am please change the slide first one is your forensic toxicology so the forensic toxicology is the branch of science where we you know study about the toxicology or the presence of toxic compound in a body right and where we study the effect of that toxic compound for the purpose of law that is known as your forensic toxicology whenever the word forensic get added with any subject with any subject right so that means we are using that subject for the purpose of law right so that is known as forensic uh, forensic and then uh, whatever branches you are talking about so when we are talking about forensic toxicology so that means a study of toxic compound for the purpose of law is known as forensic toxicology the father of forensic toxicology was parcelus and the modern father of uh, forensic toxicology is your matthew orifila please change the slide ma'am forensic botany so when we study the botany right for the forensic purpose means the study and examination of plant based evidence like your leaf flower wood fruit seed pollen for the criminal and non criminal investigation right for answering the other legal questions is known as forensic botany right so basically this is very understood to understand the forensic importance of every subject please change now for an, uh, sorry i have repeated the forensic toxicology could you please uh, skip this slide forensic chemistry so in forensic chemistry we'll discuss about the you know study of chemistry for the legal purpose like like when we suppose there is a arson case right so what kind of fuel used in arson what was the angle of the fire right what are the chemical constituent of that fuel so these are your forensic chemistry or these comes under forensic chemistry right or any chemical substance suppose in case of acid attack case right you have many times heard about acid attack case right so if anyone is using h2so4 so when we are testing that particular acid and its component for the purpose of law and proving whether that as uh, you know particular substance is harmful for an individual or not so this is known as your forensic chemistry please change then forensic psychology again the application of psychology for the legal purpose right so uh, in forensic psychology what we do we used to examine the perpetrator 
via lie detection, via narco analysis, via brain fingerprinting or brain mapping, you can say. Okay, change please. Forensic pathology. So the branch of pathology deals with examination of corpse to determine the cause of death. So when the dissection of corpse done to examine the cause of death is known as forensic pathology. You have heard about post-mortem. Why we used to perform post-mortem? Because to identify the cause of death. Next, please. Odontology means the study of, uh, you know, uh, the study of dentistry, which involves in the investigation, right? So suppose there is a bite mark in the case of rape. In rape case, there is a bite mark present on the victim's body. So when we are casting that bite mark, when we are trying to finding out the criminal with the help of that bite mark, right? That is known as forensic odontology. Or if you get one, if you get a, a you know tooth on the scene of occurrence, right, of any animal or any uh, human. So with that tooth, you can go for the DNA analysis for the species identification test. And this is how you will get the evidence regarding that, uh, you know, situation. Change, please. Forensic entomology. Many of time you people heard about drowning, right? That people uh, die because of drowning. So in drowning case, we used to study about your, uh, you know, when we, uh, when the, uh, there is a, uh, you know, insect growth on the mm -hmm. body of the corpse, right? So we study that anthropods, right? So basically forensic entomology involves the application and study of biology of the insect and other orthopod for the criminal investigation or to solve crime. This is known as forensic entomology. Change please. Forensic engineering is an emerging field in which we study about the investigation of failures. You have heard many times that bridge get collapse, thousand people die, right? So when we study about the structural collapse and uh, for the purpose of law is known as forensic engineering. Likewise, when we are talking about the DNA, right? So that is known as forensic DNA, analysis of DNA for the forensic purpose. Right. So in nowadays, we directly go with the DNA analysis of the person because the DNA will give you very distinguished data to identify the perpetrator, right? Or to identify the victim. Okay. So this is your forensic DNA analysis. Next, please. Forensic anthropology basically the study of bones for the criminal justice system, right? So uh, in mass disaster, you have heard about, you know, uh, the that uh, plane crash or the, you know, Kedarnath case, right? So there, how they identify the cops, how they, you know, hand over the cops to the relative by the help of anthropological study. So with the help of bones, you can identify the height, stature, sex of an individual, right? So for the criminal justice system also, we used to go with the study of the bones. Next, please. Digital forensics. So basically you have, you know, many of the time you have seen, uh, congratulations, you have won 5 lakhs rupees. So these are kind of fraud. And when we investigate fraud against your, you know, uh, or for the, uh, when we go with the digital purpose, right? So when we are investigating digital crime for the criminal justice system is known as your digital forensic. Example, if you have extracted data from computer, if you extracted data from pen drive, CD, DVD, etc., that is known as your digital forensic, right? So this basically digital forensic is the study of digital device for your uh, Court of law. Next, please. Ballistics. So, forensic ballistic involves the analysis of evidence related to the firearm for the court of law. So, basically, when we are studying about the type, nature of the firearm, size of the firearm, make and model of the firearm, mechanism of action for the criminal purpose or for the criminal justice system, that is known as your forensic ballistics. Next, please. I have repeated the odontology also. Sorry for that. Skip the slide. Yeah. 
and this is the hierarchy of you know the forensic uh, directorate of forensic science right it is established in 2003 2002 to 2003 by uh, ms rao right? MS Rao is the founder of Directorate of Forensic Science. So it comes under the Government of India, Ministry of Home Affairs. It is divided into two. One is your DFSS, uh, so Directorate of Forensic Science Service, and another one is your CFSN. So in DFS, in DFS, basically, all the forensic state laboratory and regional laboratory comes, and in the another one, all the CFSLs and CBI come, right? So basically, government of India, right, divided it into the two categories. One is DFSS and other one is your CFSL, New Delhi, right? So under DFSS, all the forensic labs and GQD come and another one is all the CFSLs of India and New Delhi CBI comes under this category, right? Please change. So this is the forensic science laboratory category. So basically, it is the topmost forensic lab is CFSL, that is Central Forensic Science Lab. And in our India, it is uh, seven. Total number of forensic science lab, Central Forensic Science Laboratory is seven. Mm -hmm. Then 28 SFSL, the full form of SFSL is State Forensic Science Laboratory. RFSL is Regional Forensic Science Laboratory. Mm -hmm. And MFSL is Mini or local forensic science laboratory, right? So in every state, there are approximately five to six regional forensic science laboratory. We have we are having seven CFSLs, 28 SFSL, and in every state, there is one SFSL, right? And in every state, there is five to six or more than that RFSL. Please change. This is GEQD is general examiner of the question document, right? First established in Shimla 1906, then in Kolkata 1963, then in Hyderabad 1968. The first forensic central forensic science laboratory established in Kolkata in 1957, and the first state forensic science laboratory established in Kolkata only. Right? Please change. So this is about your state, uh, Central Forensic Science Laboratory. We have already discussed, right? So uh, first one is your CFSL Kolkata, which is famous for the biological division. Then CFSL Chandigarh, then CFSL Hyderabad. Please change. Then these are next, right? CFSL Chandigarh is famous for chemical sciences. Hyderabad is famous for physical evidence. So, so these are all your Central Forensic Science Laboratory. Please change. Now this is the hierarchy of the person or you can say employee of your uh, forensic organization or you can say the hierarchy of the forensic professional in the forensic laboratory. The topmost layer is of director, right? Then your additional director. Then one is your deputy director, then assistant director, right? These all are the category of director. So the uh, foremost level is director and the last position of director is assistant director, right? Then your uh, senior scientific officer. No, ma'am, please. Uh -huh. Junior, uh, senior scientific uh, officer, then your uh, uh, scientific officer, then your senior scientific assistant, then your scientific assistant, lab assistant, lab attendant, and then your sweeper and fiance, right? Now the lab or the government of India divided the lab administration into two. One is your technical staff. So the people who are working in the laboratory are your technical staff, of course, right? And Second one is your ministerial uh, staff, right? So those who are looking towards the CFSL, SFSL, regional FSL means the minister under whom the all laboratory is coming is known as your uh, ministerial staff. Please change. So I have, uh, yeah, so discuss all the things. Now coming to the scope of the forensic science. So what are the scope of the forensic science? So you can... First of all, you can join 
forensic laboratory right according to the uh, eligibility criteria you can apply you can join forensic laboratory then you can uh, you can be uh, an educator in the universities for that you have to complete your masters in forensic science and then you have to complete your phd also right and you have to qualify national eligibility test then you can be a private crime scene investigator also you can join with any uh, you know local firm or you can say private firm and uh, become a crime scene investigator or you can say the forensic pro private forensic professional right crime re reporter you can become you can become a forensic engineer right so these all are your forensic scope or else uh, you can join the instrument based laboratory in forensic lab we need to operate different kind of instrument right so uh, you know based upon that there are some other job in other sectors also like those company which are manufacturing instruments like your parkin elmer parkin elmer is manufacturing gc right gas chromatography so if you know how to perform gc how to you know operate gc so on the basis of that skill you will get recruited in parkin elmer or the company like uh, other parkin elmers right so these are another opportunity also you can be a counselor you can join private firm so the scope of forensic is endless means i can take total one session completely on the scope of forensic science because it's an endless opportunity right there is a endless opportunity in forensic science right so in some other session i will discuss in detail about this but for now you just look into the gist of the scope of forensic science next please uh, who at the crime scene so fine so if there is a crime scene so who will report first first one is your police officer of course police officer will uh, inform the forensic expert so that is known as crime scene investigation unit so we are uh, the people i mean forensic expert who are under csi then your district attorney then medical examiner then specialist and detectives if required change please now the scientist who contributed in forensic science so first the father of forensic science is sir edmund lockard then you have studied about uh, you know um, sherlock holmes so sir orthon canon doyle he, i have uh, may, uh, forgot to mention his name but uh, orally i am telling you the name sir orthon canon doyle he wrote sherlock holmes and you can't believe that before all this technique in his imagination only he has built lot of forensic techniques right he has discussed about luminol test in his sherlock home book right and then your matthew orifila the father of modern toxicology parcelas father of uh, you know conventional toxicology alphens bertillon he was the father of uh, he is the father of modern identification system albert s osborn he is the father of question document dr henry fault he work in the forensic field francis galton father of forensic fingerprint then dr alex jeffre he is the father of forensic dna right so these and there are lot of scientists who work in the field of forensic science and contributed in our india also dr lalji singh work in the field of dna and contributed lot of efforts in the field of forensic science right so these these are all about your forensic science thank you so much for giving me chance to discuss about the forensic science to spread the awareness about the forensic science thank you so much madam now the session is open for the questions yeah okay thank you ma'am thank you so much for your amazing session Ma'am, I have some questions here. Mm -hmm. Okay, how uh, is artificial intelligence being integrated into forensic science, and uh, what potential benefits and challenges does it present for the field? Could you please repeat the question once, ma'am? Yeah, how is artificial intelligence being integrated into forensic science, and what potential benefits and challenges does it present for the field? Oh. 
Okay, ma'am. See, artificial uh, C. Now the forensic is based on both conventional and modern technique, right? We are using artificial intelligence or you can say the software for solving the, you know, uh, digital uh, digital forensic or in the case of digital forensic we are using some software for solving the cases right so uh, the forensic is based upon both conventional and your uh, you know modern technique right so there might be possible in case of artificial intelligence or in case of some software many of the time the software cannot detect your data properly right so for that you need to develop up some other software or you need to send it to the CBI if you are not having that proper particular software. So these are the challenges. Okay, okay. And can you explain the applications and challenges of forensic entomology in solving crimes, particularly in yeah, cases? In, yes, yes, please complete. Yeah, in cases involving decomposed remains. Okay, ma'am. So, uh, suppose uh, there is a dead body, right? There is a dead body and it is from past five days, right? So, there is a growth of, you know, uh, insect on the dead body, right? So, we, you know, with the help of that insect, we can find the time since death and the geographical location, right? Okay. So, these are the application. Yeah. Yeah, okay. How do uh, criminal profiling and forensic psychology contribute to forensic science and what are the ethical considerations in their use? Okay, ma'am. So criminal profiling, if you are talking about criminal profiling, right? Yeah. So basically criminal profiling can be done by, you know, in many yeah. ways right yes. first one is your if you are going for the dna identification right you with the help of dna identification you can go with the criminal profiling mm -hmm. and second is your with the help of lie detection narco analysis mm -hmm. brain mapping so these are all techniques by which you can do criminal profiling but our court of law says you can you know you know our article uh, one article says that a person cannot be witness against himself so before you know uh, going for the lie detection you need to take the uh, permission of that particular person right if you want to do lie detection of the particular perpetrator you need to take permission of that perpetrator to perform the lie detection, to perform the, uh, you know, brain mapping or the narco analysis. So these are the ethics followed by our government of India. Yes. And this, uh, this lie detection test, narco analysis test, these all are, ma'am, uh, corroborative evidence. This is 100% not accepted by the law because our law says a person cannot be witness against himself. You cannot force an individual to be witness against himself in subconscious mind. Right? Yeah. So, this is the fact. Yeah, okay. And yeah. um, how has the DNA technology advanced the reopening and solving of cold cases? And uh, what are the challenges in dealing with older ev evidence? In DNA, you are asking about DNA, right? Oh, yes. Okay, ma'am. So, uh, see, ma'am, nowadays the entire forensic is moved towards the DNA and digital. Now yes. the entire forensic is dancing on digital forensic and the DNA forensic, right? So yes. yes, DNA is playing a very crucial and significant role in forensic science and within 24 hours, you can produce a report. Even the FSL Jaipur is playing so nice role and, they, and you know, they produce report within 24 hours and a perpetrator get hanged within nine days. You can't believe. In India, the cases prolonged for nine years, 10 years, but what Jaipur is doing, they, you know, send death, uh, uh, they give death sentence within nine days and produce report within 24 hours. So yes, DNA uh, examination is very vital and crucial, but for that, you know, a uh, trace amount of evidence is always required but if you go for the DNA analysis, DNA analysis is a destructive technique, means you will not able to reuse your evidence. Once you will use the evidence for the DNA analysis, once you will go with the process, you cannot reuse the evidence because it is a destructive technique first. Second thing, 
uh, contamination sometime you know give improper Im improper result in dna analysis so contamination is one of the challenge in your dna examination yeah okay ma'am what are the key methods or techniques used in forensic anthropology and how do they contribute to the identification of human remains okay okay ma'am so uh, basically the bones right our long bone right mm. like tibia femurs with the help of these bone you can uh, able to find out the stature of the individual right so mm. you can do the classification of the individual right so mm. for and also with the help of bone you can identify the dna right if you get bone of uh, you know 12 years older bone right so it will give you the 100% dna result right so it can solve even 30 years older cases also so mm -hmm. this is the you know benefit of anthropology yeah okay oh, thank you ma'am thank you for the answers uh, the questions are over here so uh, the answers are very useful i hope the access and that the participants can understand about that mm -hmm. so finally ma'am uh, ladies and gentlemen ma'am uh on behalf of mastering up i stand before you with deep gratitude as we conclude this enlightening session on forensic science it's my honor to express our sincere appreciation to our distinguished guest speaker ms shaili tagur ms tagur your extensive knowledge and practical experience in the field of forensic science have enriched our understanding of this complex and vital discipline your dedication to education and your significant contributions as an assistant professor are truly commendable your experiences from internships at uh, forensic science laboratories in agmodabad and sagar shed light on the practical aspects of forensic science and its impact on crime solving in closing i would like to extend our deepest appreciation for your time expertise and the dedication you have shown to the field of forensic science your contributions today have left an indelible mark on our understanding of this critical area of study you have inspired and informed us and for that we are genuinely thankful so ladies and gentlemen please join me in a warm round of applause to our appreciation to ms uh, shaili tagur for her invaluable contribution to this session so thank you once again ms tagur we are truly grateful for your presence and insights So thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, ma'am, for giving me the opportunity and uh, you know looking forward for the further and more opportunity. Thank you so much. Yes, thank you.